Hallelujah! Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Good morning and welcome to this service. Today is the seventh Sunday of Easter, the Sunday after Ascension Day. On Thursday, we celebrated how the risen Jesus left this earth and returned to his Father to take his throne over all dominions and powers, leaving his disciples with an assurance of his return and a promise of the Holy Spirit. Next Sunday, we celebrate the fulfilment of that promise as we celebrate the coming of that same Spirit. For the disciples, this must have been a strange in-between time as they waited without the physical presence of Jesus for the Spirit to come. As his disciples today, however, we are blessed by the Spirit's presence and trust that Spirit to be with us as we worship today. The Spirit of the Lord fills the world and knows our every word and deed. Let us then open ourselves to the Lord and confess our sins in penitence and faith. You raise the dead to the life in the spirit. Lord, have mercy. You bring pardon and peace to the broken in heart. Christ, have mercy. You make one by your spirit, the torn and divided. Lord, have mercy. May God Almighty have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 16, verses 16 to 34. One day, as we were going to the place of prayer, we met a slave girl who had a spirit of divination and brought her owners a great deal of money by fortune telling. While she followed Paul and us, she would cry out, these men are slaves of the most high God who proclaim to you a way of salvation. She kept doing this for many days, but Paul was very much annoyed, turned and said to the spirit, I order you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And it came out that very hour. But when the owners saw that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace before the authorities. When they had brought them before the magistrates, they said, these men are disturbing our city. They are Jews and are advocating customs that are not lawful for us as Romans to adopt and observe. The crowd joined in attacking them and the magistrates had them stripped of their clothing and ordered them to be beaten with rods. After they had given them a severe flogging, they threw them into prison and ordered the jailer to keep them securely. Following these instructions, he put them in the innermost cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was an earthquake, so violent that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's chains were unfastened. When the jailer woke up and saw the prison doors wide open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself since he supposed the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted in a loud voice, Do not harm yourself, for we are all here. The jailer called for lights and rushing in, he fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. Then they brought him outside and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They answered, 
Believe on the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. This spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. At the same hour of the night, he took them and washed their wounds. At the, and he and his entire family were baptized without delay. He brought them into the house and set food before them. And he and his entire household rejoiced that he had become a believer in God. This is the word of the Lord. My name is Caroline Howe um, and I am children's minister at St John's Church in Sharo. Um, but um, during the week I'm head of special educational needs and disability for North Yorkshire County Council. The challenges are trying to make limited resources of all types um, stretch as far as we'd like them mm. to. The joys are when you do manage to pull that off and when people pull together to meet the needs of individual children and you see success um, for individual children. When, when times are difficult, we all lean on our faith and, and my job can be really difficult. Um, it also involves making a lot of really difficult decisions, um, balancing lots of different demands and different expectations to try and make the right decision. Um, so I guess it's in decision making um, that my faith um, is most relied upon. Mm. the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus looked up to heaven and prayed, Holy Father, I ask not only on behalf of these, but also on behalf of those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one. As you, Father, are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given them so that they may be one, as we are one. I in them, and you in me, that they may become completely one, so that the world may know that you have sent me, and have loved them, even as you have loved me. Father, I desire that those also whom, you've, whom you have given me may be with me where I am, to see my glory which you have given me, because you loved me before the foundation of the world. 
Righteous Father, the world does not know you, but I know you, and these know that you have sent me. I made your name known to them, and I will make it known, so that the love with which you have loved me may be in them, and I in them. This is the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. May I speak in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ has no body now but yours, no hands, no feet on earth but yours. Yours are the eyes with which he looks with compassion on this world. Yours are the feet with which he walks to do good. Yours are the hands through which he blesses all the world. Yours are the hands, yours are the feet, yours are the eyes. You are his body. Christ has no body on earth now, but yours. These words from St. Teresa of Avila seem particularly suitable for the Sunday after Ascension Day. The earthly ministry of Jesus has come to an end and he has entrusted it to his disciples. Whilst he was with them, he was teaching them, leading them, guiding them, helping them to learn from their mistakes. Now he has handed the task over to them and it appears for now as if he has left them to it. In due course, they will receive the Holy Spirit, but for now, it must seem an awesome responsibility to go all over the world and preach to all creation. I wonder if they felt excited by it or daunted by the possibility. I know that the first time I read St. Teresa's words, I was overwhelmed by the trust that Christ places in his followers. Yet at the same time, I felt wholly inadequate to the task. How could I possibly be Christ's eyes, hands, feet and body? I was only me. But I had misunderstood the point. I was thinking of myself as an individual, something which it is all too easy to do in our somewhat individualistic society, rather than as a member of the wider community of the church. I was wondering how I might approach this task in my own strength, rather than in and through the power of the Holy Spirit working within me. The task of representing Christ on earth was not something that I would be undertaking alone. When Jesus left the disciples to return to his heavenly father, he did not leave them alone. Even though they were waiting for the spirit, they had each other. This, I would suggest, is part of the reason why, just before his death, Jesus placed such emphasis on his disciples being one, being united. For it was together that they were to be his body. This unity, our gospel for this morning tells us, is not only Jesus' hope and prayer for those his first disciples, but for all of those who will come after them and believe in him through their word. And that includes us. This kind of unity that Jesus is seeking from his disciples is not trivial. It is the same kind of unity that he shares with the Father, an intimate relationship and an utter reliance one on the other. Jesus tells us that it is through this unity that the world may know Jesus' love. We show this love corporately. This is not to say that we are unable to undertake individual acts of love and compassion. Indeed, I would suggest that we are required to. But it does relieve us of some of the pressure of thinking that everything is down to us. It puts our contribution into perspective. We are part of something much bigger. The sum of our actions is greater 
than the individual parts. So I like to think of St. Teresa's prayer as not addressed to me individually, as I thought the first time I read it, but is addressed corporately to us. And therefore, with apologies to St. Teresa, I'd like to change the pronouns. Christ has no body now, but ours. No hands, no feet on earth, but ours. Ours are the eyes with which he looks with compassion on this world. Ours are the feet with which he walks to do good. Ours are the hands through which he blesses all the world. Ours are the hand. Ours are the feet. Ours are the eyes. We are his body. For we are the body of Christ. Let us declare our faith in God. 
we believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Risen Lord, we continue to marvel at your astonishing love, that you endured humiliation and agony on the cross, not because you had to, but because you chose to. However often we hear it, we are still amazed by the magnitude of your love and the awesomeness of your sacrifice. Heavenly Father, we seek, however inadequately, to follow your example of loving our neighbours. Sometimes this is easy, but often it is very difficult, especially when we see and read about physical and mental cruelty, unfairness and greed carried out by certain regimes and individuals throughout our world. Father, we pray for those who are hurting at this time, for those besieged by war, by famine, by lack of purpose, by illness. And in our hearts and in silence, we bring to you all those who we know personally who are ill. We pray for those recently bereaved and are having to learn to live without the physical nearness of a loved one. And again, we bring to you the names of those we know. Lord, in your mercy. Father God, we pray for unity amongst those who follow you. We pray that each individual may be a light in this troubled world. And if we all come together, work and pray together, how strong that light could be, bringing all humanity as one to serve and praise you. Lord, in your mercy. We pray today for those in positions of responsibility, for the leaders of our churches, be they serving in great cathedrals or in small country parishes, for those who are in government and set the tone for the well-being and administration of the country, for those responsible for law and order and who must balance the handling of petty crime through to serious and often heinous acts of one person against another. For those in caring roles, with the task of dealing with a whole range of medical and mental health. For those responsible for the education of our young and have influence on their future lives. Lord, we pray all the, these in such positions may be guided and strengthened in their resolve and commitment to those they seek to serve. Lord, in your mercy. Thank you, Father, that you do not leave us alone, but instead draw alongside us each day. Thank you that just as you met with your followers on the road and disciples in the upper room, so you meet with us in our journey of life, always there to guide, protect, comfort and support each and every one of us. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, 
Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. We beseech you, leave us not comfortless, but send your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to the place where our Saviour Christ is gone before, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray as our Saviour taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Spirit of truth lead you into all truth. Give you grace to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And strengthen you to proclaim the word and works of God. And the blessing of God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you now and forever. Amen. Mm -hmm.